Hello everyone, Camo here, and today instead of a build video, I have a guide. This is going to be a guide in pretty much every single way how to maximize your DPS, both on the target dummy and on bosses in vet trials, normal trials, vet dungeons, etc, etc. I'm going to be covering all kinds of tips, tricks, and really just an entire playstyle change that can really maximize your DPS to its fullest potential. We'll take a look at static rotations, dynamic rotations, light attack, heavy attack weaving, optimization, optimization of the CP tree, etc, etc. Alright, so before we really get too much into rotations, the first and most basic thing with DPS, honestly, is weaving. So, this is more of a concern for newer players, but even some of the more advanced players can mess this up occasionally. It is incredibly important that you land light attacks between every ability. If you're a full light attack build, obviously you would just do light attacks. If you're a heavy attack build, you sometimes need to weigh heavy attacks as well. You never want to just do just a light attack. That's not really going to work. Um, nor do you want to do just an ability. That won't work either. Now, if I use only abilities here, not only is the animation slower, but I'm missing out on more or less, I'm waiting for this to cool down. That alone is 3k, but with our Maelstrom enchantment, that's like 9 to 12k DPS we're losing every time we don't light attack between abilities. Basically, light attacks, let me pull up a parse real quick, can make up a pretty good amount of your DPS. Here's flame light attacks and here's lightning light attacks. Together they're about 7k. So had we not weaved correctly, this would have been 32 rather than about 40. That's pretty important. To light attack weave, it's pretty simple. You simply light attack and then ability. So I'm going to show it like this. As you can see, the light attack connected and hit the target. But instead of the animation where we pull the staff back after I light attack, it's just gone, and it's replaced with me casting the ability. Ultimately, you're adding about, like I said, 9 to 12k extra damage every time you light attack between an ability. You want to do this between everything. Elemental Drain included. Even buffs like that, you want to light attack in between. Even starting the fight with an ultimate, you want to light attack ultimate. Always add the light attacks. It adds a ton of damage. Very important. It's quite simple, honestly. If you're just learning how to light attack weave, maybe start by just doing one ability for like, I don't know, a couple minutes. Just learn how to light attack, blockade, light attack, blockade, light attack, blockade. It's really important. You'll learn this a second nature though. If you just basically spam the light attack button and cast abilities, it'll basically just happen. It becomes second nature at a certain point. This is very important to master though. Even missing just one or two light attacks can seriously skew your DPS. So make sure to make those count and land. Now, the next part is heavy attack weaving. You don't really see this on Magicka as much, but on stamina it's more obvious and more prominent. So, heavy attack weaving. While the heavy attack is happening, you spam the ability. So as soon as the animation ends, the ability goes off. It's definitely wonkier and will obviously yield less damage than light attack weaving, but you do this on the occasional moments you need to heavy attack for whatever reason. It will give you a bit more DPS, not quite the same extent as a light attack weave though. This is also the reason I try to make most of my builds light attack rotations, because ultimately I think they do more damage than heavy attack rotations, and while some builds will always require one or two heavy attacks, it is still best to try to get as many light attacks as possible. The more light attacks we do, the more damage you can do. That's why builds like Stamina and Magicka Nightblade can hit so freaking hard is because they can sustain only light attacks, therefore their damage gets really high. It's not the only reason, but it's a big factor. On a Sork, you might see about 7k on light attacks, but on a Nightblade, it could be 9k or even 10k. So, keep that in mind. Just make sure you're light attack weaving. It's quite important. Now, the only reason I'm on a Magic Sork is because I think it's perhaps one of the most clear contrasts between a static and a dynamic rotation. I'm going to get into this. This is a very big part of maximizing your DPS. And I'm going to talk about it. So, I'm going to show you a few parses that I think kind of demonstrate, if you will, the difference between a static and a dynamic rotation. So, most players in Elder Scrolls 
tend to use static rotations. Now, what do I mean by static rotation? Well, a static rotation means it's set in stone and you will always repeat that same cycle over and over again. Every rotation obviously has combos and has priorities, but static rotations are especially, if you will, static. They don't change. You always do the same motion. With this non-pet sort build, if I was to make it into a quote-unquote static rotation, I would do the following. Blockade, Haunting Curse, Fire Swap, Liquid Lightning, Force Pulse, Liquid Lightning, etc. You would just constantly do this over and over. There wouldn't be any difference. I would always do the exact same motions. Now, it's literally impossible with Haunting Curse to do a static rotation because it's only cast every two, but the point would be I would always just be spending too much time on my back bar, and I would constantly do the exact same motion over and over again. Hence, static. It never changes. That's not how this class works, though. This class revolves around a dynamic rotation. If I was to do a static rotation, instead of constantly or consistently hitting 38 to 40k with this class, I would hit probably 35 to 36 I'm not even joking, it makes a huge difference. To demonstrate, with my Stamina Nightblade video, I made a simplified rotation so it would be easier for people. This is 44k. Now it's still decent, of course, but with a dynamic rotation, you can hit 47k. Same class, everything's the same, 3k more damage. 3k isn't a flat number, mind you, but keep in mind that a dynamic rotation will always do more damage. This is still low, actually. I've seen people hit 50 to 52k on Stamina Nightblade. They just even are more dynamic. Now, now we know what a static rotation is. What's a dynamic rotation? Well, what it means is this. Instead of doing the exact same motion over and over, I'm going to go on this dummy because it has far more health and I won't kill this by accident. Um, Instead of doing the exact same motion over and over, what we do is we have priorities in our mind and we know to make decisions. You'll hear me a lot in some of my build videos saying it's decision time or you make the choices, etc. What separates a good or decent DPS from a great DPS is just the ability to make quick decisions and make them correctly. What I mean by decisions is this. Let's say I have, these are my following dots, blockade, curse, and liquid lightning. These are all up now, correct? So I have all my dots on the ground, and there's some uptime. They have at least a couple seconds before it's time to reapply them. What I could do here is simply force pulse, and just whenever I know blockade's going to run out, I just reapply it. That would be more static, but with dynamic, you keep track of every, of every single dot, right? So let's take a look at this. Liquid lightning lasts 10 seconds. Blockade of storms lasts eight seconds. That doesn't mean after two seconds it's time to reapply this after this runs out. What that means is if I know this is eight seconds, then in my mind I know that this comes a little after. Because when I start the fight, I don't go liquid, or sorry, blockade, and then liquid, right? That would be a true two seconds away. What actually happens is liquid, or blockade, haunting, then liquid lightning. So in reality, it's like a three to four second difference. All that means is I have to keep track of that as a priority. The priorities are to keep the dots up, there's no doubt about that. But you definitely have some downtime in rotations to do what I would call user spammable. Force pulses are spammable. Any class that doesn't have a spammable suffers because they don't get to do dynamic rotation. For example, a lot of sorks like to run pets. If you run a volatile, right? It's another dot, so it's nice damage. But if I don't run Force Pulse, maybe I run a second Pets, perhaps, right? Obviously, that's a weird bar setup. But the point is, now I have no Spamble at all in this class. So what that means is what I'm forced to do is keep Dots up and just Heavy Attack in between. That's not that strong. Heavy attacks obviously do some decent damage, but I have no downtime in the rotation. All I'm doing is applying dots and letting the dots do their damage. It's not really an effective way to do more damage. To really optimize any build, you need a spamble. I'll show you why in a second. 
the reason this is kind of disjointed is because there's just so much to break down, but I'm going to eventually have it all come together and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of what I mean and why it's so incredibly important to run dynamic rotations. All right, so taking off the pets here, we now have a couple of advantages. For one, we have our spam bowl, right? We also have less dots to keep track of. I have a total of three. They're all quite strong, but that's all I have to keep track of is blockade, curse, and liquid. So in my dynamic rotation, what I know is once I cast my initial fight part, which is these three dots, I have spam bolts to use. So I can use force pulse a couple times, crystal frag. Now I know blockade's gonna run out, so I'll reapply it. I'll come back, but the lightning's about to run out, reapply it, haunting curse is coming, reapply it, force pulse, crystal frag, blockade's gonna run out, reapply, force pulse. Forest Pulse, Liquid Lightning. That was a ton of bar swapping, as you just saw. Those were all little micro decisions I just made. To really maximize my DPS, I took the initiative to, instead of just constantly doing the same motion, as you can see, starting the fight looked quite different from how it continued. I knew when Liquid Lightning would fall off. I knew when Blockade would fall off. I kept track of Haunting Curse by watching the number tick down. That way I had more room to use more Force Pulses and got more Fragments, which translates to more damage. A lot of DPS, obviously by the name, damage per second, comes from what we do in our downtime. When we have free time to do what we want, we should be using spam balls. When we know dots are coming back up, it's the most utmost priority to put them back up. So instead of force pulsing again and letting blockade fall off, I would immediately bar swap, put blockade back up. I know liquid lightning is coming up, I might use one force pulse and then liquid lightning. It's all decisions. It's up to you what to do. You have to decide it for yourself. Is it worth to let my blockade fall off to get this crystal frag off? Or should I just blockade and then bar swap and then crystal frag? So how to start to dust a dino rotation? Well, basically it's this. You have to come up with a priority list. I can give you the basics. In Elder Scrolls Online, just looking at this parse again, most of your damage comes from dots. Liquid Lightning, Blockade, these two are direct. This is a dot, this is a dot, this is a dot. As you can see, a good chunk of our damage comes from these two. Keeping these two up is like the utmost priority. So on my priority list, it's Liquid Lightning, right, is the utmost priority because it's a bit more damage, but very closely after is Blockade. Neither one of these should fall off if I'm trying to do a higher damage, right? This could even be 2k higher. Um, from the build video that I showed you, I hit 38 with this same setup, right? But today I hit 40, and that's because I'm getting more used to this rotation. What it means is this, I know when to keep things up, and the more comfortable you get with your class, if you are really good at any particular class, you know how your dots work. I know Liquid Lightning is coming pretty closely after Blockade falls off, but the effort is to know it's been about 7 seconds, it's time to reapply Blockade. It's been about 9, it's time to reapply Liquid. So these two are your top priorities. Crystal Frags, you can't control when this procs, but... Whenever it's up, you gotta use it. So if this procs, it's an instant use. Don't use Force Pulse when you can use Crystal Frag, right? So if you use a Force Pulse and Crystal Frag comes up, don't Force Pulse again and then Crystal Frag, Crystal Frag and then Force Pulse. Because as you can see, these three Force Pulses together did about 3.2, this was about 3.3. It's a little bit higher, but the point is one of these does more damage than one Force Pulse. So it's really important to get these off when they proc. Light Attacks. Again, this should just be part of it. There is no priority for Glide Attacks. Every single ability has a Light Attack in between it. Zahn, again, something we can't control, just like if you use a Lambris instead. We can't control when this procs, but again. The point is, I need to make sure I have a priority list. So a sample priority list for this class is Liquid Lightning, then Blockade, Crystal Frag when it procs, Haunted Curse, Ulti. However, Ulti is kind of its own thing. We'll get to that. But after um, Haunting Curse would be Force Pulse, and that's it. So Force Pulse is our spam bowl, but it's also our lowest priority. All that means is, it's when we have free time. So if I'm doing a rotation, I have some free time. I have a good, like, two to three seconds before I have to reapply stuff, right? I can use one more there, sneak one in, reapply. Don't be afraid to bar swap a lot. As you can see, I just bar swapped an absolute gigaton there. And it's because I know I can get a couple force pulses in and see 
the more I bar swap and the more I force pulse, the more I can proc crystal frags. Obviously, it depends on the class. Like, not every class works that way, but every class can sneak in more force pulses or more spambles. Basically, it goes like this. Priority list, dots, right? So that's the easy part, is just keeping the dots up. The hard part is knowing when to bar swap and to force pulse and all that. You'll learn this on your own, but you'll realize once you have a dynamic rotation how much more fluid it is and how much more you're in tune with your class. Like I know when liquid's falling, I know when blockade's falling, I know when I have to swap to reapply curse, and I know when to force pulse. The other advantage to something like this is because we bar swap so much, Look at our uptime on Berserker Enchant, which is weapon damage. 65%. This is because I'm bar swapping, like, literally all the time. So I have really high uptime on an extra, like, 400 plus spell damage. With most dynamic rotations, you actually want Infuse on your back bar. With Magicka, by the way. This is all talking about Magicka. You want Infuse on the back bar with weapon damage because we're weapon talking so much. Magicka Nightblades, non-pet sorks, all that stuff uses dynamic rotations, therefore Infuse is better. Another parse for another example um, would be like Magicka Templar. I hit about 38 with that, right? I don't actually have it on me, but the point is it could be higher if I got more dynamic. Every class has a higher ceiling the more dynamic your rotation is. If you can get a mastery of rotation, you'll get more damage. So what I want you to take away from this is, rather than just trying to do a static, oh, I know I have to use these abilities and these abilities and repeat, try to get the concept of a quote-unquote rotation out of your mind. Think of your abilities as priorities, and know that Liquid Lightning and Blockade are our two most priorities, then a Haunting Curse, and then Force Pulse. Then you almost have an order of what to use, but it's not really, if you know what I mean. Like... With a dynamic condition, we get downtime and Berserker Enchants. With a static, we get almost no downtime and very low Berserker Enchants to the point where it's almost not worth running. The typical Sork double pet or even single pet clench build won't work. What does work with dynamic conditions is a Sork build with Force Pulse. Any build, in my opinion, should really have some kind of spamble. Otherwise, you're just losing damage. Keep this in mind. Use your spamble in the off time, and you'll have so much more damage. I guarantee it. Learn when you can squeeze in force pulses, or whatever your spamble is. If you're on stamina, maybe you use surprise attack, whatever it is. You know, Shrouded Daggers on Stam Stork, Biting Jabs on um, Stamina Templar. DK doesn't really have a spamble, hence it suffers somewhat. It's harder to do dynamic conditions with something like a Stamina DK or a Standard Magic of Pet Stork. They have a really obvious skill ceiling and a really obvious damage ceiling because they don't have dynamic rotations. Typically speaking, a non-pet sork should not be able to out-DPS a pet sork, but because I have this dynamic rotation, I can actually outperform a lot of pet sorks. Just keep that in mind. Okay? So that's the rotation bit. I would advise, like, watching over this a couple times and figuring out what your class is, what your spamble is, what your priorities are. Think this to your head, keep it in mind, and just practice this dynamic rotation. It's it's hard to describe because every class is different, but figure out what your dots are, what your priorities are, and when you have uptime and downtime, right? When you have to reapply dots, make sure you're doing that priority. If blockade's gonna fall off, you have to reapply it, that kind of thing. Figure it out for yourself, and your damage will go through the roof. It will be insane. It will do so much more than statics, because with statics, you're overcasting your dots, and you don't have a spamble. Or if you do, you're undercasting the spamble. With Dynamic Rotation, we get the perfect balance of over and under casting. It's perfect. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's talk about a couple more things for optimizing damage, just in general. Keeping in mind, again, Dynamic will always do more damage, but just with this in mind, what can we do with our Dynamic Rotation just to get more damage? Well, the most obvious is CP, right? Adjusting these values will change how much damage you do. So you have to play around with these. If you know your dots do a lot of damage, like recently I just put a couple more points into Thaumaturge because I realized how much more they do than my um, single target. You have to know what's important. If you're a Magicka Nightblade, you don't need 75 Thaumaturge. You need like perhaps 35 to 40, right? And you need more Mastered Arms. Know your class. Know what's doing the damage. Figure it out what does the most damage for your class. So CP is the obvious way to optimize your damage. Once you have rotation and everything, this is one of those things you can fine-tune to get more damage. Figure out how much penetration you need. All this stuff 
is important to figure out on your own. I can't give you a best setup because there is no best setup. Just try to figure out on your own what CP is best for your dynamic rotation. The other thing is Mundus Stone. If you're solo, you should pretty much always use the lever. Now, some people consider this quote-unquote cheese, but here's my idea of cheese. If you wouldn't ever use it in a raid, it's kind of cheese. The lover, in my opinion, is not, though, because, again, these numbers don't mean a whole lot. I like to, it does more damage, so if you're solo in VMA, you want to run it, like, legitimately. Um, I only put the apprentice on if I'm in a group scenario, like a big group scenario, like a trial. Why would I take the lover off and skewer my damage just for the quote-unquote not cheese, you know what I mean? So, it's to figure out how much damage you can do alone. I know that with this build, I can hit 38 to 40 in VMA, for example, on a stationary target. So, why would I put the apprentice on and do less? You have to think about this kind of thing for yourself. But, ultimately, if you're alone, use the lover, and if you're in a group, use the apprentice. The same goes for stamina. You can use the lover alone and the warrior in a group. In a trial, Apprentice will give you more optimized damage, therefore you run it. However, not every trial is like this. If you know you have low Crushers up time, low Torog, low Alkosh in your group, then maybe you still need the Lover. It might, it's not always cut and dry, but in an optimized group, the Apprentice is more damage. It's these kind of decisions outside of combat that also give us more damage. Decisions in combat of when to reapply, when to force pulse, etc. Decisions out of combat of what to use. And then there's another thing. In a trial scenario, right? This is this is just a kind of like tip thing. If I know my dots do the most damage, maybe I have to focus multiple targets, right? Here's an example. I'm doing um, veteran Sanctum Ophidia and perhaps the Overcharger ran off for whatever reason. Obviously this shouldn't happen, but let's just say it does. If this is the boss, I put my dots down on it, these do the most damage, and then I turn around to direct damage the other target, okay? I reapply my dots here when I know they're about to fall off. Direct damage this target. The reason I do this is so I can still get some nice damage on this boss while also hitting this target. This target has less health, this target has more. I want more chipping away at it while I aid the group while taking down a priority target. This is pretty much always the case. In VAA, for example, if you're fighting the mage, I put my dots down on the mage. And then while the group is killing the reflection, you can do this. Now, if there's like two or people two people focusing reflection, you might have to put the dots on it. You have to figure out what the priority is and how much health it has, etc. But as a general rule of thumb, if you have to focus multiple targets, most important target, like the boss, gets the dots, and the less important one, which might have a couple people focusing it, will die fast if you just force pulse a couple times. Decisions like that will optimize your damage greatly. If you're on the move, perhaps you have to do a mechanic, put your dots down. It's always dots, that's the thing start running around. Maybe it's VMA. If I have to grab a crystal or something, I might put the dots down on one or whatever. It's all about decisions. You need to know where your damage comes from and what it does. Right? So if I know that I'm going to be running around, maybe I'm like running in the whatever in some VMA arena, right? Like the spider arena. If I have to go kill one of the web spinners, I'll just put my dots on this. I won't force pulse this target. There's no point to that. I'll force pulse the other target. That's a very simple thing to teach, obviously, but that's not really the most important. The most important takeaway from this video I want you to understand is the dynamic rotation. If you have any more questions on that, please contact me on the Xbox server, and I'll be more than happy to assist you with it. But really, every dynamic rotation is kind of like a child. It's your creation. You have to figure out on your own what it's going to be. I can only give input and advice, but ultimately, it, your rotation is your rotation. Figure it out on yourself. I hope this helped. Ultimately, there's a lot of ways to optimize damage, gear sets, etc., which we, we could go into for days. You know, there's your race that matters, all this stuff. But that's all more marginal than rotation. Rotation is by far the biggest thing in this game. If you can get a perfect dynamic rotation going on, you will do so much damage, it's crazy. You can be a wood elf and out damage a red guard or a Khajiit easily if you have a better rotation for them. That's where it mostly matters, right? So, anyway guys, I hope this was helpful. I can do more videos like this if you like. See you all next time. Peace.